century continued into the 15th at the same time, there were elements of recovery that made the 15th century a period of significant political, economic, artistic, and intellectual change. The humanists or intellectuals of the age called their period from the 14th to the 16th century an age of rebirth, believing that they had restored arts and letters to the new glory after they had been neglected or dead for centuries. Class, does anyone know what this is called? Correct. This is the Renaissance. Please turn to page 314. Renaissance means rebirth. Many people who lived in Italy between 1350 and 1550 believed that they had witnessed a rebirth of antiquity or Greco-Roman civilization. The Roman Empire in their own era was a middle period. The Middle Ages characterized by darkness because of its lack of classical culture. Historians of the 19th century later use a similar term in dialogy to describe this period in Italy. The Swiss historian and art critic Jacob modern concept of the Renaissance in his celebrated book, The Civilization of the Renaissance in Italy. Published in 1860, he portrayed Italy in the 14th and 15th centuries as the birthplace of the modern world and saw a revival of antiquity, the perfecting of the individual, and security. Burkhardt exaggerated the individuality of secularism of the Renaissance and failed to recognize the depths of its religious sentiment. Nevertheless, he established the framework for all modern interpretations of the period. Although contemporary scholars do not believe that the Renaissance represents a sudden or dramatic cultural break within the Middle Ages, as Burkhardt argued, there was, after all, much continuity in the economic, political, and social life. The Renaissance can still be viewed as a distinct period of European history that manifested itself first in Italy and then spread to the rest of Europe. Renaissance Italy was largely an urban society. As a result of its commercial preconference and political evolution, northern Italy by the mid-14th century was mostly a land of independent cities that dominated country districts around them. These city-states became the centers of Italian political, economic, and social life. Within this new urban society, a secular spirit emerged as increasing wealth created new possibilities for the enjoyment of worldly things. Above all, the Renaissance was an age of recovery from the calamitous 14th century, the slow process of recuperating from the effects of the Black Death, political order, and economic reason. This recovery was accompanied by a rediscovery of the culture of classical antiquity. Increasingly aware of their own historical past, Italian intellectuals became increasingly interested in the Greco-Roman culture ancient Mediterranean world. This revival of classical antiquity, the Middle Ages had in fact preserved much of ancient Latin culture, affected activities as diverse in politics and art, and led to new attempts and reconciled the pagan philosophy of the Greco-Roman world with Christian thought, as well as new ways of viewing human beings. By the 14th century, Italian merchants were carrying on a flourishing commerce through the Mediterranean also expanded their lines of trade north along the Atlantic seaboard. The great galleys of the Venetian Flanders fleet managed a direct sea route from Venice to England and the Netherlands, where Italian merchants came into contact with the increasingly powerful and acidic league of merchants. Hit hard by the plague, the Italians lost their commercial permanence while the Hanseatic League continued to profit. Expansion of Trade As early as the 13th century, a number of North German coastal towns had formed a commercial and military association known as the Hansa or Hansetic League. By 1500, more than 80 cities belonged to the League, which had established settlements and commercial bases in many cities in England and Northern Europe, including the chief towns of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. For almost 200 years, the Hansa had a monopoly on Northern Europe trade in timber, fish, grain, metals, honey, and wines. Its southern outlet in Flanders, the port city of Burgess, became the economic crossroads of Europe in the 14th century, serving as the meeting place between Hansetic merchants and the Flanders fleet of Venice. In the 15th century, however, slitting on the port of Gulf Burgess to enter a slow decline, so did the 
transcendently, increasingly unable to compete with the developing larger territorial states. The economic depression of the 14th century also affected patterns of manufacturing. The woolen industries of Flanders and the northern Italian cities had been particularly devastated. By the beginning of the 15th century, however, the Florentine monk woolen industry had begun to recover. At the same time, the Italian cities began to develop and expand luxury industries, especially silk, glassware, and hardworked items in metal and precious stones. Other new industries, especially printing and mining and metallurgy, began to rival the textile industry. When rulers began to transfer their titles to underground minerals to fantasires of collateral for loans, these entrepreneurs quickly doubled up large mining operations to produce copper, iron, and silver. The city of Florence regained its preconference in the banking of the 15th century, due primarily to the Medici family. The Medici had expanded from cloth production into commerce, real estate, and banking. And its best days in the 15th century, the House of Medici was the greatest bank in all of Europe, with branches in Venice, Milan, Rome, Burgess, London, and Lyons. Moreover, the family had controlling interests in industrial enterprises for wool sill and the mining of alum used in the dyeing of textiles. Except for a brief interruption, the Medici were also the principal bankers for the papacy, a position that preceded big profits and influence at the papal court. Despite its great success in the early and middle part of the 15th century, the Medici bank suffered a rather sudden decline at the end of the century due to poor leadership and a series of bad loans, especially uncollectible loans to rulers. In 1494, when the French expelled the Medici from Florence and confiscated financial edifice collapsed. The Renaissance inherited its social structure from the Middle Ages. Society remained fundamentally divided into three estates. The first estate, the clergy, whose predominance was grounded in the belief that people should be guided to spiritual ends. The second estate, the nobility, whose privileges were based on the principle that the nobles provided security and justice for society. And the third estate, which considered the peasants and inhabitants of the towns and cities. The social order was experienced certain new adaptations of the Renaissance, which we can see by examining the second and third estates the clergy would like to be examined in Chapter 13 class. Throughout much of Europe, the land-holding nobles faced declining real incomes during the greater part of the 14th and 15th centuries. While the expense of the maintaining noble status was rising, nevertheless members of the old nobility survived, infused its ranks. A reconstruction of the aristocracy as well as underway by 1500. By 1500 certain ideals came back to be expected in the aristocrat. These were expressed in the book of the Corte by... I'm sorry class, it seems that we've run out of time. We'll pick this up tomorrow on page 317, okay? Your homework is to read